So today we're diving into math literacy, mm -hmm. a subject where, let's be honest, sometimes it feels a bit like, like you're solving a puzzle, but maybe missing a few pieces. Yeah, I know what you mean. We hear that some listeners, you know, have found it tricky. Right. So our mission today is to pull out those key actionable steps, mm -hmm. not just to pass, but to really ace it to get that distinction. And, you know, based on our source today, it seems like it's actually... Well, maybe not easy, but definitely achievable. Yeah. Not that difficult at all, apparently. Okay, so where are we getting this from? We spent some time with a YouTube video. It's called How to Get a Distinction in Math Literacy Study Tips from a channel named Faith. But look, we want to show you today that getting a distinction, totally possible. It's doable. Absolutely. It really is achievable for anyone who puts in the effort with the right uh, strategy. Okay, let's dive in. First step. Understand your syllabus properly. Yeah, and I mean really understand it, not just a quick look. So more than just the list of topics, what should you be looking for? Well, the crucial thing is the weighting. How many marks each section is worth in the exam? That's your roadmap, basically. Okay, weighting, like where the big points are. Exactly. Things like um, income tax, other taxes, tariffs, they often carry quite a few marks. Knowing that helps you, you know, prioritize. Prioritize your study time. Smart. So it's not just about covering everything equally. Well, you do need to cover everything, even areas like measurements, which might seem like fewer marks. But, you can't just ignore them. They still add up. Uh, but knowing the weighting helps you allocate your main focus. Right. It's about being strategic with your time and effort, making sure you're prepared across the board, but hitting the big stuff hard. Precisely. No nasty surprises if you understand the whole syllabus landscape. OK, got it. Step two, then go to your classes regularly. Sounds basic, maybe? It does sound basic, but honestly, it's fundamental. Being there means you get the explanation straight from the teacher. You hear how they explain it, the examples they use? Exactly. And it's your best chance to ask questions right then and there. If something's confusing, clear it up immediately. Yeah, don't sit there confused. And you need to be actually like participating, okay, right? yeah. not just physically present. Absolutely. Ask questions, even if they feel small. And take notes, good notes. What makes notes good? in this context. Notes that capture what your teacher emphasizes, their specific examples, their way of explaining things. Those notes become a really personal, valuable study tool later on. Makes sense. OK, step three. This feels like a big one. Practice regularly, consistently. Okay. Absolutely crucial. Maths lit isn't a spectator sport. You have to do the maths. Get your hands dirty with the problems. Yes, especially application questions. Solving lots of different types helps build those problem-solving skills, that sort of muscle memory for applying concepts. So where do you find these problems? Just the textbook. Textbook is your starting point, definitely. But don't stop there. Past papers, because they show you exactly the style of questions, the format, the level of difficulty you can expect in the actual exam. It's invaluable preparation. OK, textbook, past papers, anywhere else. Yeah, look online, too. There are loads of resources, websites with practice questions, different explanations, maybe. Broaden your exposure. Good tip. <laughs> right. Step four, ask for help when you need it. Don't struggle alone. Definitely. It's not weakness. It's smart studying. If you're hitting a wall with a topic or a type of question again and again. Go talk to the teacher. Yes. Go talk to your teacher. Get clarification. They can give you specific help right where you need it. Why battle it alone? True. What about studying with friends, mm -hmm. study groups? Yeah, they can be really helpful. Talking through problems with classmates, explaining concepts to each other. Sometimes explaining it helps you understand it better yourself, right? Exactly. And you get different perspectives, different ways of tackling a problem. It can really make things click. OK, step five is about organization. Create a study schedule. Plan your time. Yeah, this brings structure. You need a plan to make sure you cover everything and allocate time effectively. So you divide up your time based on, well, based on that weighting we talked about. Hmm. Uh-huh. Factor in the weighting. Give more time to the heavier topics, but schedule time for everything. And crucially... Revision time. Yes. Build in time for revision before the exams. Don't just learn it once. And because maths lit is so practical, does that steady, consistent effort pay off more than maybe cramming for, say, a history exam. Oh, absolutely. Consistent practice and review throughout the year makes a massive difference. You're building skills steadily, not just memorizing facts for a short time. A distinction is built over time. Right, which leads nicely into step six. Review and revise regularly. Keep revisiting things. Precisely. 
Learning sticks better when you review it regularly. It keeps the concepts fresh in your mind. So that revision time you scheduled, what should you actually do during revision? Just reread your notes. No, not just passive rereading. Be active. Focus on practicing problems again, especially the ones you found difficult the first time around. Ah, tackle the tricky stuff. Yes. That's how you see if you've really understood it and where you might still need a bit more work. It helps identify those last few weak spots. Okay. Step seven, use your resources. Textbooks, guides, online stuff. Yeah, use everything available. Textbooks, study guides might offer different explanations or more examples. Online tutorials can be great too. Different ways of explaining the same thing can sometimes just click, can't they? Exactly. And they all offer more practice questions, which is always good. More familiarity. And we're back to practice exams again. Always. They are such a key resource. Past papers especially. They simulate the real thing. Gets you used to the pressure of the timing. Precisely. Yeah. Which brings us to step eight. Develop exam strategies. It's not just knowing the work, it's performing on the day. Game day prep. So understand the exam format. Yes. Yeah. Know the structure, what kinds of questions are usually asked, how much time you have. Again, past papers are your best friend here. And managing that time during the actual exam is vital. How do you practice that? When you do those practice papers, time yourself. Seriously, use a stopwatch. Like a proper mock exam. Exactly. Get a feel for how long you should spend on each section. Aim to finish with a little time spare, if possible, to check things over. Practice helps you avoid panic if you feel time pressure. Good advice. Okay, step nine. This one's optional, you say, but recommended. Get feedback. Yeah, if you can, get someone to look over your practice work, maybe a practice exam or some tough assignments. A teacher or maybe a tutor. Yep, they can give you specific feedback. Point out where you're going wrong or could improve. It's incredibly valuable. But you have to be willing to like listen to it constructively, right? Oh, absolutely. See it as yeah. guidance, not criticism. Use that feedback to spot patterns in your mistakes and tweak your study approach. It helps you focus your energy effectively. Makes sense. And that leads to the final step, number 10, which kind of holds it all together. Stay motivated and confident. Mindset matters. Hugely. You have to believe you can achieve that distinction. It sounds a bit cliche, maybe, but it's true. How do you stay motivated, though? It's a long haul. Set small, achievable goals along the way. Celebrate when you master a tough topic or do well in a practice test. Keep that positive attitude up. Because that confidence, plus all the hard work and the smart strategies, yeah. that's the winning combo for MathSlit. That's exactly it. Consistent effort, strategic study, using the resources, asking for help, and believing in yourself. That's how you get there. So there you have it. Ten steps. It's a clear path to aiming for that distinction in maths lit. It really is within reach if you follow these steps. Absolutely. Put in the consistent effort. Use these strategies. Think about how satisfying it'll be to really master these practical skills. So yeah, go apply these ideas, build that confidence, and good luck. And if this sounds like your kind of thing, if you want to explore these topics more with us, well, hitting subscribe is probably a good idea. Definitely. Yeah. Click that subscribe button. We've got plenty more planned. And uh, maybe give this video a like. It helps other people who are interested in this stuff find the channel. Please do. It makes a difference. Stay creative. Stay curious. And stay connected.